Hey everyone, this is Angie at Stampin' with the More. Welcome to my channel. If you are new to my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell for notifications each time I upload a new video. I looked yesterday and I was less than 50 more for the 30,000 subscribers. And when we hit that, I am going to share a giveaway. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell because I post every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Sunday. And every once in a while, I'll throw in another video. It could be just Stampin' Up! related, or it can be like a haul, or it can be another project. You just never know. So today is Mother's Day project, and I created this one. Oh my gosh. Y'all, I went crazy with the flowers. I'm only going to do on the one I share today three sides because that was my original idea. So this is a five-sided box and oh my goodness, look at these flowers. Can you see that they are all stitched? I went crazy and started just making a bunch of them. So I went all the way around. You can go all the way around if you want. I originally thought I was going to just do like three sides, but oh my goodness. And I did put two different color ribbons on here, but I did have both that were Misty Moonlight and then I changed the top one to Bumblebee and I may just change this bottom one. It really brightened it up. And so, um, yeah, I thought it was really cute with the Bumblebee ribbon on it. Now I'm using Night of Navy and it's, it's gonna be a little bit hard to see, but I'm going to probably just draw up a template and put it up on my blog. And if you've seen them like this, let me know because I looked and I couldn't find any. And I, as I was doing the big size, I was thinking, wouldn't it be cute, smaller as well? So uh, you may see one of those coming up uh, in the near future. But I, I used all the brights colors. You know I love the brights. So I used all the brights colors on this. So you can see um, the only one I didn't was some of these leaves I did in shaded spruce because I wanted a variation in the leaves. So this is what I'm sharing today. It's so cute. Oh my gosh. The dyes are the pierced blooms and every one of these has stitching on it. Um, this is all the ones I used for this box. And to tell you the truth, I went ahead and did these all ahead of time and I used all scrap that I had. So they were all small pieces. I ran them all through in two swooshes for that whole box. But these are both in this Pierce Blooms die set. And then this is the In Bloom stamp set. So this comes as a bundle. So this is the stamp set right here. And it has happy birthday, you mean so much to me, you're amazing. You can use any of those even for um, your Mother's Day box. But I am using the Itty Bitty Greetings. And if you've been loving this set, you need to get it. It is retiring. It's one of my favorite. I'm so going to miss this. But I am using the Happy Mother's Day from the Itty Bitty Greetings. But I'm not stamping today. I'm just using the dies. They're just too gorgeous. <laughs> I can't believe I missed that in my first round of orders, but they're so pretty. So let's get started with the box. So for this, like I said, I'm using Night of a Navy because I love the bright colors up against the Stark Navy. This is 10 and a half by five and a half. So we are gonna score this. You do have to do some hand scoring on this, but this box is so worth the hand scoring because I thought it was so cute at the end. All right, so on the 10 and a half inch side, you're going to score it at one half, two and a half, four and a half, six and a half, and eight and a half. All right. And then on the five and a half inch side, you're going to score it at one and three quarters and three and three quarters. And that is your scoring. Now, like I said, you're going to have to hand score, but I'm going to show you first where I cut. Now, this is the half inch side. So we are just going to cut up here. 
This middle one's going to be our glue tab. So we are cutting both these end ones off. And I am going to score before I cut the rest of these. So we are going to mark the center of each one of these squares. Can you see these squares? We're marking the center. Each square is two inches. So we are going to mark it at one inch on the top here of each square in the center and then one inch on the opposite side. So I'm just going to use my little stylus to make the little mark. So you're going to you're going to actually mark it at 1 3 5 7 and 9. So that's right in between. We're going to turn it over. You're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to mark it at 1 3 5, 7, and 9. Now, this is going to take a minute. I'm going to show you just a few, like two or three, and then I'm going to speed it up because you don't need to watch me do every single one of these. So you're going from the point that you marked to the corner at the bottom here. So let me bring it up, and I'm going to tell you again. So this point that you marked... You're going to go at a diagonal to this corner right here. Then you're going to go from this point to this corner here. And we're going to do that on every one of these and every one of these on the bottom. All right, so let's go ahead and score these. And I'm just scoring it on my graph paper. You, you can use um, a little spongier surface. I used to use my other mat, but... I don't know what I did with that right now. I couldn't find it, so I'm just going to do it on here. So I'm going to do this one side, and then I will speed it up for the other side because it's going to be the exact same thing that you're doing. So you are making a upside down V or you're making a triangle shape. So here you go. Can you see that? I know this paper is really hard to see, but we're going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. So I'm going to go ahead and speed it up now. Okay, so look at that's what it looks like. Both sides are sharpened. Now we are going to cut between every one of these on the score marks that we scored. We're going to do both sides like this. Now I've done these boxes before where only one side was cut like this, but I don't know. Something told me to try it on the other side as well to see what it looked like and I thought it was so cute because it looks kind of like a little bobble. All right, so we have them all cut down like that. You're not cutting into these. You were going to have to sharpen all these score marks. I'm actually going to flip it over because the score marks are going to go the opposite way. So you're going to score all of these sharpen every one and also sharpen all your other score marks that you have. Okay, so I sharpened every one of the score marks. Now the reason I want the opposite way is because this is how the box is going to fold. Now, if you like the square look, you can go with the square look. I like the corners rounded, so I'm using my little corner rounder on this. You can use the other corner rounder. This one is just faster for me. And we have a lot of corners to round here. So I am going to go ahead and round all the corners, and I'll be right back.
All right, everyone, all the corners are rounded on both sides, so we're ready to put this together now. So we're going to put tear and tape on this little glue tab, and we want to make sure you have a strong adhesive there because it is a good size box, and you're probably going to fill it with either a small gift, because it will fit a small gift, or um, some goodies. And if you're going to put some nice chocolates or something in it, it's going to be a little bit heavy. So make sure you use a good, strong adhesive. So we are attaching this side. And now before we go any further, I am using my eighth inch circle, or yeah, eighth inch hole punch, but we don't carry this anymore. It's stamping up. But if you want to use the larger one, you can use the larger one. I just like the smaller one. And you can find these everywhere. I've seen them all over. So what you want to do is you want to punch in the center of this V. So I'm going to go ahead and punch there. So you see that? You want to do that in every one of these. All right, we've got all the holes punched on both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and use the bumblebee on each one of these on both sides on this one. So what I did was I'm going to start here on the inside, but all you're going to do is alternate around. So I think that I used, you know what, I'm going to just measure this first. I think I used like 13 or 14 inches so I'm going to just cut 14 and we are going to and make sure you have a point you're going to have to cut it a couple times because this does fray a little bit as you're going through so we're just going to alternate in in and out on these and then when you pull it together I'll show you what it looks like Yeah, I have to keep cutting a little bit. And so you'll have these both these ends here. And I'm just going to make sure these are all lined up like that. You're just going to pull these tight. Oops. I need to make sure these ends are the same. Here, so I'm going to pull some of that through. You want to make sure your ends are about the same length so you can tie a bow up here. And then I'm just going to tie a bow in the top. It's really easy. So you want to make sure you have enough. That's why I, I did 14 inches. Because I noticed that this does fray a bit. And then you just have a little bit left over. So can you see that? How that is. Alright. Now we are going to do... Don't forget to put your candy or whatever you're putting in first before you do the other side because you, you'll have to undo it all. It, it'll be not fun. So that's the front. I'm going to start on the same side on this side. There we go. Now let's tie our bow. Tie is a really, really nice bow. And that's our little bauble box. I don't even know what to call it. It kind of looks like a little bauble to me. Something that you can hang on a tree, a Christmas tree or something. All right, so now I'm going to grab my sentiment and some of my Whisper White. We're going to stamp it in Memento Black. And 
and I am going to use my oval punch here, the double oval, but I'm going to use the regular oval on this one. So I'm going to get both ovals, so I'll save that scalloped one for another project. All right, so there's our Happy Mother's Day. We're going to go ahead and put that on. I'm going to use wet glue. I actually used wet glue on this whole thing. I just want to make sure that they stay on. So pick whatever side you want to be your front. And just put your Mother's Day on here. And you can even pop these up on here, but the dimension is so pretty with all the flowers. So I'm going to bring them all here so you can see how pretty these flowers are. All different shapes and sizes. And like I said, I didn't even use all of them. And also, there's little centers to these flowers. I use these as flowers and I use some as centers, but these are for the larger ones like that. And I'm going to put a yellow one on this one. So we're going to glue these in place. And then this one here. So what takes the most time actually is just the box itself. But once you get it down, oh my goodness, it, it goes fast. It's just like the tying part that gets a little, can be a little crazy. All right, let's see. This one right here, do we want to put a center in it? Yeah, let's go ahead and put this little yellow one in there. And I think I'm going to leave, well, here's one more. I'm trying to decide what to put in the center. I think I'm going to put this one in the center here. And I have this one right here. Let's go ahead and put a yellow one in that. All right, I think we got everything set and ready to go. So the around the Mother's Day, I'm going to use some of the smaller flowers like this one. And I'm going to actually use some of the smaller leaves like these two right here. So we're going to put those down. Make sure you put down the side that is the stitch side because they, they both look stitched. So... You want to be sure the right side stitching's on there. So we're going to use that one. And let's use this one right here on this side. I think I'm going to use this single one I have right here for that flower. And we'll use this little flower here. Oh my goodness, this is the most fun part. And then some of these little ones, I'm just going to put on like close to the flowers, like just to add a little bit of interest. Oh, we need to move that up. It's covering the day a little bit. Like that. And then, oops. You do have to be careful about letting these dry. And then I am going to put, I think on this side, I'm going to put a one of these little ones here. You can tuck them behind or however you like to do it. All right. And then let's see. I don't know. What, what, should, what should, should we do with this? Should we put one of these here? I don't know. I think I'm going to put another one of those right there. And then we'll move on to the side. Like that. I think I lost some of my leaf on this one, but it's all right. We're going with it. All right. So I'm going to do a big one. So I'm going to put these leaves down here. And then we're going to add a big flower here. You see where I'm going with this? You just keep adding until you get... That's why I said I went crazy and I kept on adding more and more stuff to it. I'm going to use a dark um, 
shaded spruce leaf on this one. If you want to do around the whole box, you're going to need to probably run through another batch of flowers. On this side, I'm going to do, let's see, let's let these flowers go this way. So, and then we're going to do, how about this one, this big one. I better move that up. And then we'll put the big flower. It is easier putting it on the flower. And then I'm going to add some other flowers here. I'm going to add this, I think, underneath. I like just giving it extra dimension. I'm going to add a yellow one, this yellow one. I could add a center to this yellow one too. I'm going to add it up here. And I think I'm going to put like a, this little gorgeous grape in the center of that. So you can see this is your own, make it your own. But, oh my goodness, I love these flowers. I want to add something here, but I don't know. No, I don't want to take away from the Mother's Day, the uh, Happy Mother's Day. But look, I can even go around again. I can add more. I told you I just went crazy and I kept adding. So this is, this is what I did when I was doing the original. But I think I will go all the way around again on this. I just need to cut a couple more leaves. I can use this one and then just cut a couple more little leaves on there. But isn't it cute? I love this box. It's so pretty. And it looks so beautiful for Mother's Day, right? So you can see I did cut off a little bit there. I can see that. I may have to cut another one. So can you see how I did that? All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this. It's really fun to do. And oh my goodness, you can go crazy just keeping adding and adding and adding. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you need any supplies, you can shop on my blog at stampingwithamore.com. Have a blessed one, everyone. I'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Bye.